excited and happy to welcome you all to the first webinar of this academic year entitled Symbiosis 2021 or Notes from an Ecologist by Mr. Bharat, who is also an alumni. And for the inauguration of our events for this academic year conducted by our new office bearers. Um, so there are certain general guidelines which your, all the participants need to follow. Kindly, please do not unmute and talk uh, when the speaker is giving his speak, his talk, and uh, you all are only allowed to unmute during the question and answer session. And after the meeting, a link will be sent to you all, a quiz link. Um, so please kindly uh, participate in the quiz and after you all participate in the quiz, you all will get the certificate within a day's time. So over to Ajay who will play us a short video clip on the last year's events conducted by the National Science Association. Is the audio visible? Can you guys hear? No, I can't hear the audio, Ajay. No? No, it's still not audible. There must be an option uh, to share the audio as well along with the video. Can you please check, Ajay? Yeah, yeah, just I'm done checking. Ajay, when you share screen, uh, just before you go to Windows, you have a check button up there, share computer audio. You sh you'll have to switch that on. Yes, ma'am. Audible now? No, Ajay, it's not. Ajay, you're trying the option uh, Viola Ma'am said. Sir, I have tried that option, but I'm not getting that option. It is just uh, available above the uh, tab to click for Windows. It is like, you know, um, a check button where you can switch it on. Just when you say share, a small window pops up. I think to the uh, top right side, you can see that. Yes, when you press the option share, you will get the option share presentation window 
at that time you will get as viola said of switching on the audio computer audio try doing that no first stop sharing and then when you click the share again then you will get ma'am i'm getting the only this entire the entire screen windows and chrome tab i'm not getting about the audio thing there should be audio button also there uh, on and off as as viola said the check button you have to check that that enable the computer audio or laptop audio ajay if it is happening fine if not it's all visual it can uh, go on only at the fag end of it uh, the office bearers of the previous batch are sharing their experiences maybe that will be in mute mode otherwise it's a, a visual view of all the events that we conducted last year try playing it if the audio doesn't fit we can go mute okay yes sir yeah let's save time uh, we'll go ahead the same thing will be uploaded on the nsa youtube channel uh, we will share that link uh, all of us can watch it from the nsa youtube channel okay so we will go ahead with that uh dr jayshankar sir if anybody else has a video why don't others try that okay um will you pass it on uh, ajay to anybody ready to play it there is one option that you can play it uh, in a phone and keep uh, the mic on that's one suggestion that has come from the team or you can put it in the team ajay and uh, one of them can play anybody from the nsa core group wants to pitch in okay i think so uh, shukumar sir will go with the uh, video with this mute mode uh, yes I, yes please sorry. go ahead if it is not possible not possible that's so, maybe i'll try it uh, hello sir this is yashwant uh, yashwant okay uh, maybe i'll try presenting it okay ajay can you send it to yashwant uh, meanwhile uh, even rebecca you are appearing in the video but uh, manjari rebecca kishan if you want to share your views live you can go ahead uh, in that duration uh, ajay will send it to yashwant and yashwant can play it so the others can share your experiences of the events that were conducted by nsa in the last year what are your opinions you can go ahead let's finish this fast and then allow bharat to address us uh 
good evening everyone i'm rebecca so last year i was in the co committee uh, as well i was in the publicity team and uh, since it was the pandemic we had to go in for webinars and com online competitions so there were we conducted a lot of webinars such as the national tiger webinar ignition lecture series for the students by the students and we conducted a lot of competitions as well and many of the students uh, won cash prize um, people from the other colleges as well participated in these uh, competitions and we got really good feedback and this year we are looking forward to conducting more webinars and um, in a more better and more fun way and uh, yeah last year uh, we did a, uh, a great job and uh, cuz many of the students participated and uh, many of the teachers also attended the webinars and it was very insightful uh, so yeah so that's the, my experience working in natural science association and uh, we are looking forward for more webinars uh, this year as well thank you others who are presented during the student webinar series one of nsa's initiative to use in house students as resource persons and allow them to share their experiences that is what the intention of the student webinar series was uh, anybody wants to speak on that can share their views Ajay, have you sent it to Ashwant? Uh, good evening. Sir, no, sir. It's kind of one GB file, so it's taking time. Okay. Yeah, somebody else. So I guess uh, it'd be better if Ajay only plays it because this, uh, the size of the file is too lengthy, so okay. I, I take a lot of time transferring. Perfect. So I suggest we will go with the uh, mute mode uh, because it's all visuals. Uh, I can pitch in and say what those events were. So uh, Ajay, go ahead. We can proceed. Playing the same file without audio. Jay, can you fast forward it? Yes, that's about the poster on the International Tiger Day. Then we also had Dr. Shantabala Gurumayam from the Zoological Survey of India speaking on the fishes of Arunachal Pradesh. Then we had a series of computations during the pandemic era. All of them are here. The photography, the sketching, clicking a bee and uploading that with a frame. And also coinciding with what the United Nations has announced for this decade, the uh, ecosystem restoration as the theme from 2021 to 2030 uh, during the World Environment Day on June 5th we had this paint or snapshot your concern uh, related to 
ecosystem restoration. And we also went on for hands-on webinars, like sketching the animal world to enable students to sketch and learn the art of sketching. So in addition to webinars, we also had these hands-on kind of uh, online sessions organized by the Natural Science Association. And as you see the logo, this was designed by the team last year. You have every fauna that is prominent in the Indian subcontinent, starting from the Gangetic uh, dolphin to the great Indian bustard, the lion, the Asiatic elephant, the king cobra, the purple frogs, and also the bird wing butterflies. This is the initiative that I was telling that the National Science started allowing its own students from the college to be resource persons to speak on different themes. And almost five such series relating to different habitat ecology that you see wings of color with regards to butterflies, the deep blue sea talking about the marine ecosystem, uh, wildlife trekking, photography, all this were the themes that our own students were resource persons. And that's the essence of the student webinar series. And we will continue to host them this year too. And uh, we wish uh, students who have joined this year will also take part of being resource persons to address audience during the student webinar series. The term paper, a search and design was also presented by one of the uh, senior students to guide uh, second year students who have to take up term paper, a curricular requirement that has to be submitted. We touched on different areas, uh, including science uh, and gender, gender and science, where Anthony Kenneth and Soumya Rachel, our alumni, uh, were there to present their views in this regard. So we try to reach out and stay connected with the alumni as well. In addition to the student webinar series, we also launched the Young Ecologist webinar series. Uh, again, uh, students present and past were resource persons who shared their views on the perspectives on conservation biology. Ignatian lecture series, very uh, dear to Natural Science Association and the Department of Zoology. We have been conducting it in a line for the past five years and this year's theme was on coping with climate change. Uh, and we are also planning to organize the Ignatian lecture series this year too. In continuation with that tradition that NSA is being following. The annual events are highlights, special highlights for NSA. This year it was themed zoophyte, combining the words zoology and Josephite. We also held a national level virtual conference on the diversity and distribution of Indian birds, where papers, oral presentations from all over the country were received and poster presentations were made by our own students from the college sharing their experiences on diversity and distribution of Indian birds. So all this would not have been possible without the NSA uh, team and the office bearers who are there. Uh, Ajay, you can forward it, forward the video. Fast forward to go into other yeah, that's the team, uh, the office bearers for 20, uh, the, the previous year. We are thankful to the management, especially principal, Father Victor Lopo, for all the support and encouragement. And to do so many events, uh, thanks to all the office bearers uh, who toiled day and night and uh, this is not possible without the support of the Department of Zoology faculty members uh, who are all here uh, with their support and encouragement uh, in organizing these events. 
and with consultation of the department. And the faculty members are also happy for the contribution that students have made in organizing these events and conducting them. So thanks to the faculty members of the Department of Zoology, the previous HOD, Professor Thomas P. Zakaria, and our present HOD, Professor K.S. Shivakumar. Uh, I think you can go forward. Ajay? Yeah, that's the final logo. Uh, that's Balaji, the outgoing president of Natural Science Association, uh, receiving an appreciation from the Forest Department, the RFO of the Banargatta National Park for an event that was conducted uh, there. Uh, Balaji spearheaded and coordinated the team that yielded such good results. Uh, that's with uh, Professor Thomas P. Zakaria, our former HOD. Now that's the team outgoing uh, with Father Principal. Yes, I think uh, that's it. Uh, uh, Jay, you can stop uh, sharing because the other is a uh, audio of the office bearer speaking. As I said, we will upload this video onto the NSA YouTube channel. This is for the information of the participants and students of zoology. Please do check into the uh, NSA YouTube channel. All the events that were conducted last year are uploaded there. Pretty informative from moth diversity to tiger conservation, the sketching. So those who missed it can make it again by watching those videos. So thank you uh, for the outgoing team. Uh, over to Rebecca. Uh, thank you, sir. I now request the head of the zoology department, Shivakuma, sir, to give the open address. Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, good evening, sir. Thank you. Uh, dear Dr. Jai Shankar, the convener of Natural Science Association, my dear colleagues of Zoology Department, Dr. Sabita Thomas, John Paul, Dr. John Paul, Dr. Pratibha, uh, Dr. Viola, Dr. Putal, Dr. Kavya, and also uh, Dr. Santosh, along with our new entrant, Dr. Samson Shantakumar. And also, my dear students, I am really happy to uh, address you all on this occasion of Natural Science Association inaugural program. Natural Science Association actually budded out of uh, as a combination of zoology and botany department some years back. But later on, the entire responsibility was picked up by the Department of Zoology. Zoology is one of the oldest department of St. Joseph's College, which was started in the year 1957. As an initiative of Zoology Department, Natural Science Association has actually scaled new heights. In the last few years, when our own young colleagues actually started coordinating the activities of Natural Science Association, very creative activities have been started to evolve. Especially in the last three or four years when Dr. Jai Shankar M has taken over the uh, responsibility of uh, evolving the Natural Science Association, it has done a lot of activities like uh, physical activities in the last few years and off late because of the pandemic. Uh, online activities also have scaled up in a very interesting as well as a creative method. So I actually am very happy to be uh, to be a part of Department of Zoology along with the Natural Science Association. So students, I would like to tell you one important thing. See, studying zoology as per the syllabus is always happening. 
But when you actually participate in these kind of activities, which is actually a co-curricular activity, I can't call it as extracurricular activity. I always try, try to call natural science association activities as co-curricular because you are trying to bring out certain new things with respect to natural sciences. It may be a webinar, it may be a seminar which is college level or state level or national level, plus certain competitions and activities which are related towards the natural science subjects. So these, these kind of co-curricular activities when planned through the department, I think it brings in a lot of not only creativity, but also satisfaction among the students and the staff of the department. And students, you not only bring about your ideas and your uh, concepts onto the Natural Science Association's desk, you also enjoy working with each other. You come to know a lot of peer group students with each other. You try to learn the leadership skills, how to organize, how to participate, how to go about doing things in a very interesting methodologies. So NSA will certainly become a platform for you to grow and evolve. Ignatian lecture series is another interesting concept which has come through the Natural Science Association. That actually was again a brainchild of the Department of Zoology. It was started during the tenure of Professor Ivan Mary Parimala, which was carried forward later by the next head of the department, that is Pro Professor Thomas P. Zakaria. Now it is again Ignatian lecture series were organized by various staff members. I think I have forgotten one or two earlier ones. I think Dr. John Paul was in charge of Ignatian lecture series one of the years, and then Dr. Jai Shankar. I think one of the uh, one of our ex colleague, Dr. Shirley Thomas, also had organized one year's Ignatian lecture series. See, their very eminent speakers actually would come to the NSA stage and then deliver certain interesting concepts. So, this is how Dr. Jai Shankar and others, who are the uh, previous coordinators of NSA, have done certain wonderful things to bring up the students' interest strength as well as their enthusiasm onto the picture which actually makes a very interesting platform for learning for both students as well as the teachers of St. Joseph's College. I, I, I take this opportunity to thank all the staff members, office bearers as well as the members of the Natural Science Association to carry forward this legacy so that we will all enjoy our academic life in the campus or online campus. I also extend my literal congratulations and thanks to the outgoing office bearers and also our previous head of the department who retired very recently, Professor Thomas P. Zakaria. And also that I welcome the new office bearers of this year, 21-22, to actively manage and work towards the success of NSA. If not success, at least we should target the happiness of doing certain activities on the days. So I would wish all the best to all the office bearers, present office bearers, members and the staff of the zoology department on this occasion of inauguration of Natural Science Association. Thank you all. All the best. Thank you, sir, for that insightful speech. So I request Dr. Jai Shankar, sir, to announce the office bearers for the current academy, sir. If uh, Ajay could share the screen, the list. Thank you, Shukumar, sir, for those inspiring words. Uh, with that, uh, we are also announcing the team for uh, this year. Uh, usually it is an election process. We send in Google Forms for aspirants, people who wish to be part of the committee. 
and based on that is what the election uh, come selection process has happened uh, considering the pandemic it was not so lively uh, because people don't know each other so we have made this selection of the office bearers for this year and the list ajay will share shortly ajay Hello, sir. Yes, Sajay, you can share the office bearers for this academic year. So, so can, can you see it? Yeah, your, uh, yes. Okay, you can go up. Up. Yeah. Yes. So, the presidents, uh, we usually believe in uh, equal representation of genders. So, we have. Uh, uh, Ashwant and uh, Rebecca, who are president uh, elect for this academic year. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, we remember the contributions Balaji and Tresa did last year. Uh, very recently, we heard uh, very sad news uh, related to Tresa. She lost her sister, who was also uh, a good friend who addressed our NSS students. Uh, that was unfortunate. Both the Tressa and uh, Balaji were active presidents that we could uh, do so many activities. You are stepping into their shoes uh, to carry on that legacy. Congratulations, both Eshwant and Rebecca. Next, you can move up, Ajay, as I announce. Let's make it fast so that uh, we start yes, the actual event. Uh, we then have uh, Donna and uh, Sumant as uh, secretaries for this uh, academic uh, year. Usually we had the vice president's post also. That was almost overlapping with the president uh, duties. So we have removed that and we have gone directly to the secretary's post. Yes, next. Uh, congratulations both, Sumant and Donna. Yeah, next. Ajay, we can scroll up. Yeah. Uh, the treasurers will be from uh, for this year uh, Darshana and uh, David. Darshana from CZPT and David from BPZ. One thing we have always kept in mind is to involve every combination uh, that zoology is in that is CBZ, uh, MCZ, uh, CEZ. CZPT and we also now have BPZ. So there has been representation of all the combinations and uh, we uh, expect students to actively participate and benefit from the webinars which are subject oriented. Otherwise, it's open to everybody who are from life sciences. Uh, Michelle um, and Raksha will be part of the documentation team. Uh, this is one hectic uh, team that has to watch our activity step by step. So we have included more members part of the documentation team uh, that has Sri Raksha, Michelle. Yes, you can go further. can scroll up, uh, Jay, there are further more team members, part of the documentation committee, yes, sir. Yeah, who will be involved, Rakshat, Manish, Rakshat from BBZ, Manish from CBZ. Yeah, next. Also, uh, Andrea and Selva Priya will be part of this documentation team. So their duty is to uh, document every event and uh, send it to the different uh, social media platforms that NSA has. 
uh, that is because of these uh, important events that we conduct, we need uh, widespread publicity. So you have the publicist and the PR team uh, where Ajay, Aman, are also part of it. Ajay from final year CEZ, Aman from second year CEZ. Yeah, uh, that's Ajay. Ajay is now to whom I'm communicating. Abhishek from second year CEZ, uh, Maria from CZBT uh, are also part of the publicist and uh, the PR team. Yeah, further. Uh, one of the milestones uh, that we achieved in the last tech, uh, year is launching the newsletter, Natura Zoologia. Yes, it's not, uh, I must admit, not taken off that uh, faster that we expected it. Um, so we are put in Manjari and Kishan and uh, Nandita and Maria Anjum, part of the Natura Zoologia newsletter team. This team will dedicate uh, in concentrating on documenting every event that NSA does and also serve as a platform where students can send in their articles, send in their photographs, share their travelogues and other experiences. So that's the team uh, that will take care of the Natura Zoology and Newsletter. So that's the list of the office bearers for this academic year. Congratulations to each one of you. Uh, the trend setting events that NSA has done uh, is now in your hands to take it further. Thank you, all of you, and over to Rebecca. I am very grateful and honored to be elected as the president of the National Science Association for this academic year. I am grateful to Jai Shankar, sir, who gave all of the office bearers a chance to showcase our talents and make us work as a team to reach greater heights. With that in note, myself and Yashwant are going to re read the events for this academic year. So starting off is the first event will be virtual conference on herpetology, followed by the Ignatian lecture series 6.0 on eco restoration. Then six days webinar on animal resources such as vermiculture, poultry, etc. Over to you, Yashwant, to read out the other events. Mm -hmm. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. OK. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, before I would say the next events uh, for the NSA for the year 20, 2021 and 2022, I would um, like to give a short speech as a newly appointed president for NSA. Uh, warm, warm welcome to everybody present here. The, this is Yashwan from MCZ. Uh, last year at the same time I was appointed as the office bearer for the NSA and uh, it was a whole new experience for me uh, preparing vouchers, reaching out to people, uh, reach, interacting with juniors and uh, hosting a lot of events. Uh, I really enjoyed working through the entire time and also uh, being a part of the NSA made me really happy. And uh, Some way we're disheartened that all these events are not taking place offline, uh, but uh, we can't. Yeah, continue. Am I audible? Yes, that's that's the issue with the online uh, webinars. Yes, sir, exactly. That's all. Those are the issues with online webinars. Uh, and uh, now being, I, I, I congratulate all the office bearers for the present year, and I'm really grateful and I heartfully thank Jay Shankar sir for providing us this opportunity and uh, being the part for making me the president of NSA and to be the part of uh, NSA for this academic year. Uh, okay. The I'll be reading out the next event, next three events, which will be, which is planned for the year 2021 and 2022. Um, that is a two-day national virtual conference on recent uh, trends on annual be, uh, animal behavior in association with Ethological Society of India, followed by regular competitions and uh, annual feast of Natural Science Association. Thank you. 
uh, with all the joy and happiness that you're thanking me, I didn't uh, pick you. It is that the Google form was sent and you people volunteered. So that's how the process of uh, becoming office bearer happens. Okay, with that, uh, we are done with all the formalities. The actual content of today's inaugural session is the talk. So over to you, Eshwan, to introduce our speaker for the day. Um, yes, sir. Um, so today, uh, the inaugural speaker for, uh, for this event is going to be Mr. Uh, Bharat S. Ahuja. Uh, he was an alumnus of the uh, Park College at the uh, 20, uh, 2012 and 20, 2015 MCZ batch. Uh, Bharat Ahuja, Mr. Bharat Ahuja is now a PhD scholar at uh, Evolutionary Biology and uh, Biogeography Lab in the prestigious Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. The topic of his doctoral research is, is mixed, mixed, mixed spices reef fish groups in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which aims to gain a better understanding about the mechanisms that initiate the formation of mixed species groups in reef fish and explore spatial and temporal variations in these groups in the Andaman Sea and look at how reef health impacts the structure and dynamics of these groups. Hope you all find this webinar uh, informative and inspiring. Over to you, sir. Dr. Jaishankar. Yes, sir. Can I use few seconds? Yes, sir. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, dear students, I am really extending my apologies. I didn't talk about Mr. Bharat Ahuja. My sincere apologies to him also. Uh, Bharat Ahuja is actually our own uh, college alumni, our own dear student. He is one of the most uh, active. He was one of the most student active and I know now he is a well qualified man. I remember he publishing a book on the birds of St. Joseph's campus when he was a student under the guidance of Dr. George Alexander, who was our colleague, ex colleague in the department. So I extend my warm welcome and I'm happy to bring back Mr. Bharat Ahuja into the family of zoology in St. Joseph's College. Thank you. Uh, over to Bharat, uh, you can start with your presentation. Uh, yeah, thank you everybody. Uh, can someone please give me your screen share access? Um, the host. I will. I will do it. Perfect. Thank you, sir. It's done, Bharat. You can go ahead. Great. Uh, before I begin, I just want to say it's great to see how much the NSA has evolved. Uh, because when I was in college, 2012, 2015, it was four uh, office bearers and some eight and a half volunteers who used to turn up sporadically in the lab, uh, but. Now it seems like you guys have a solid course of action in place and good luck for everything in the coming uh, academic year. Uh, let me just share my screen. Oh, is my screen visible? It, Bharat. Now? Mm, not it to me. Anybody else? Any? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. No, sir, not yet. Oh. Yeah. All good. Yes. Great. Uh, my presentation is nothing to do with uh, my research or uh, academia in general. It's in fact a, a collection of uh, you know resources that I wish someone had shown me uh, when I was in my bachelor's. Uh, the problem with life is hindsight is often the best teacher. Uh, so this is something that me and my batchmates have over the last couple of us sat and uh, put together. And hopefully it will be of some help to you. 
so we call it notes not from a field ecologist simply because regardless of what we are, uh, you know, uh, at heart, we are still zoologists who would love uh, to, you know, just sit in the field and observe and write notes. Unfortunately, no one pays you for that anymore. Uh, but uh, with on that, I will begin my talk. Uh, so many of you must be in this crossroads in life right now, right? Like you got into college and where do you go from here? Right? There's a bunch of avenues and opportunities uh, that come your way. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, the best way to pick what you want to do uh, would be uh, to just figure out what makes you happy or uh, if nothing makes you happy, figure out what you're good at, right? And uh, there's a bunch of opportunities that you guys are exposed to right now in comparison to even uh, when we were in college, which is not very long ago, even though I sound like a dinosaur. But uh, so there's one resource that I'd like all of you to familiarize yourself with, especially if you want to stay in the field of ecology, all right? Or uh, even if you want to do any conservation related research, uh, whether it's plants or animals, and that's Yeti. Uh, a bunch of you must have already heard of Yeti. It's a free online resource. Uh, it stands for Young Ecologists Talk and Interact, right? And prior to the pandemic, they actually used to have, uh, you know, in-person conferences as well. But the main reason I'm recommending Yeti is because essentially if you click on this link here uh, and you fill in your email address, uh, they send out emails uh, based on uh, uh, relevance to your field uh, for essentially everything, uh, internships, jobs, uh, skill sharing workshops, uh, you know, uh, paid workshops and everything. So if you ever want to network uh, in ecology in India, uh, Yeti is the go-to place, and the best thing about it is that it's free. It's run by students and ex-students, and uh, they give a lot of their time collating and sending out these mails. It, it's, it gets boring sometimes because you sometimes receive 14 emails a day which are not related to you at all. But even if one of them is relevant to you and, you know, it's your first job, for example, it's something that you can do. Uh, so please, please um, sign up for Yeti. Um, and uh, I will be sharing this presentation with your office bearers uh, simply because of, uh, for for the links. There's not there's no real other content that's of any importance. But uh, Yeti is something that is a game changer. Uh, a lot of my uh, colleagues got, I mean, a lot of my batchmates from Joseph also got their first jobs or internships through Yeti. Uh, so if you aren't on Yeti already, I would really, really recommend uh, signing up for Yeti. And another thing uh, that you know, we discussed was, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Shiv Kumar sir said, you know, what you do in the lab and what you do in classes are stuff that happens anyway, but there's a whole bunch of skills that you can develop in college, uh, you know, through various certificate courses offered by other departments or the Department of Zoology itself, uh, which are very, very relevant apart from the curriculum, right? Uh, content writing is not of course, uh, simply because it lets you work part time while you're in college but also opens up a whole bunch of avenues for you when it comes to blogging or, you know, uh, for, for example, writing for online webzines, you know, so there's a, a webzine that is Bangalore based run by Gooby Labs called Research Matters. And what they do is uh, they allow uh, people with no experience. So students like you uh, to uh, write uh, scientific uh, literature, but for the common man. So essentially, and it's no like there's no compulsion. You don't have to do a paper a week. Whenever you're free, there's an Excel sheet of recently published papers in ecology and evolution as well, or in botany or in zoology. You read the paper and uh, you write it uh, for the common man to understand. And the great thing is they pay you two rupees fifty paisa per word, so it's good money for you know uh, going out with your friends and beer. And also, it's uh, a great thing for your CV. Uh, content writing is also great if you want to, uh, again, I'm like I said, academia or doing a PhD is not the only thing you can do after a bachelor's in a place like Joseph's. There's a whole bunch of things you can do. Uh, so many of my friends are full-time content writers. Uh, Current Conservation is another magazine which is not for profit, so they don't pay, but it has a global audience. And a bunch of my friends write for CC. Uh, uh, again, uh, journaling, uh, the second picture is simply, uh, you know, something that uh, I hope a lot of you will do when you go on field trips from the NSA, uh, where you just draw what you see. Uh, art, a lot of my friends are full-time artists, 
uh, with zoology background. So apart from, you know, your lab manuals uh, and your lab records that you have to draw, uh, there's actually websites and magazines that will pay you for original illustrations. Uh, something like Deccan Herald will give you about 550 per illustration. So again, it's good side money and it's something that you can do full time if you're good at it. Green Humor is the best example. If you don't know who he is, please look him up on Instagram. He's probably one of India's best cartoonists right now. And he uh, does cartoons only on environmental issues and conservation. So another important skill is if you're good at art, you can make that a very viable career, keeping research and zoology uh, in mind. Uh, the storm thing you see here is actually a training module that's conducted by an NGO called Kalinga, uh, run by uh, Dr. Gauri Shankar, who is uh, India's leading king cobra uh, uh, researcher. So uh, the storm thing essentially here depicts field skills, right? So if you're somebody who wants to become a field ecologist or someone who wants to work in the field, there's a bunch of skills that you'll need to pick up with regard to, you know, sampling, catching creatures. If you want to explore marine biology, of course, there's snorkeling, scuba diving. These are also skills you can learn when you're in college, right? And if you are keen on a career in ecology, field skills are as important as computer skills or linguistic skills. Uh, it's a dying art. Uh, most universities, including IIC right now, will hire people specifically to catch animals. Uh, but abroad, that doesn't happen because labor isn't cheap. So if you know everything from, you know, maintenance of your animal, uh, keeping it in captivity to capturing it, collecting tissue samples, which you learn in lab, uh, it's great to develop your field skills in your bachelor's itself. Uh, and then there's, of course, computer skills, uh, which is becoming slowly, slowly extremely relevant in a field like even ecology simply because of the emphasis of biostatistics, right? So stuff like GIS, even simple things like Excel. Uh, if you want to go into a career in outreach, uh, which is again related to conservation, your PowerPoint skills become very important. Uh, management skills, again, on the computer, uh, some softwares that are relevant to ecology, something like ArcGIS, which uses satellite imaging uh, to get uh, broad uh, scale, temp broad spatial and temporal scale data sets, uh, some, uh, you know, rudimentary coding in either R or Python uh, for your analysis. But this is again moving towards academia, which is which I want to reiterate is not always going to be the case. And I have this poster of IIC Open Day uh, simply as an example of networking. Networking is probably the most underrated skill in our field. Uh, something as simple as reaching out to a professor whose lab you're, in, you're interested in over email. So many of us hesitate to do that. Uh, what's the worst thing that can happen? They won't reply or they'll say no, right? So always send out that email. Always go attend events like Open Day. Uh, a bunch of ecology labs in Bangalore, both from NCBS and IIC, have, uh, you know, conversations around conservation at coffee shops uh, like Lahe Lahe and Indranagar. We used to have them at Courtyard Cafe right near college before, but they shut. So come and attend these meets. You never know who you're going to meet and how it's going to result in, you know, either an internship or like a, a great side gig. Uh, so these are some of the skills that we wish we developed when we were in our bachelors. But I'm just telling them to you now because these are skills that are going to be important regardless of the career path you choose. Right. Uh, and then uh, you guys are so fortunate because you are doing your bachelors in the era. Uh, of citizen science. Now, citizen science is something that was emerging uh, when we were doing our bachelors in India. Uh, there were two uh, big projects. Uh, one was Bangalore Bird Race, uh, which still happens. It's essentially uh, uh, a Bangalore wide thing where you get divided into teams and uh, you go in a car or a bus or by metro uh, to different places in Bangalore and you make bird lists, right? And the top three largest bird lists uh, get prizes and it's sponsored by HSBC. So it's a huge event. So uh, apart from like a great day of fun birding, uh, we also realized that this data was actually being used by scientists. Right. And that's what citizen science is. Citizen science essentially empowers a common man uh, who probably bird watches as a hobby or someone like a photographer who's just interested in taking photos to collect data which is a very, very difficult thing to do uh, on a broad scale for a scientist. So essentially, you're collecting data that is going to be used for, you know, hardcore ecological research or for policy and planning. 
and uh, there was a lot of uh, you know it was looked upon with a lot of skepticism by academics because when you're uh, you know relying on uh, data collected by a citizen scientist uh, there's always this you know thought at the back of your head about the legitimacy of the data right like data authenticity and data integrity is very important in science but that's been sort of uh, you know uh, uh, that that apprehension has eased a bit and you now have uh, this uh, link here www.bioatlasindia.org which actually pays bachelor's and master's students to pitch citizen science projects so national moth week actually came up for this and they're giving you money uh, just to pitch a project and which will then be uh, circulated widely and people from all over india will be collecting data for your project so again uh, something that's a new uh, and it's backed by ncbs uh, it's a very new initiative and the other big uh, initiative that was around when we were there was something that had just started it was called urban slender lorises of bangalore i don't know how many of you know of this nocturnal primate that is very much found in bangalore called the slender loris uh, kadu papa in kannada um and essentially uh, people were shocked to find that these creatures were found in the heart of the city uh, in campuses like iisc hasargata uh, uh, indranagar also and uh, so what they did was they teamed up with a bunch of uh, it professionals and they started mapping the distribution and identifying areas for slender loris conservation you now have i found butterflies you have ebird which is an app i naturalist which is another app uh, and these are all free to download and basically what you get to do is log your sighting um, uh, so say you are in college and you see a, a, an egyptian vulture which is a rare bird that is sighted uh, very uh, seldom in college uh, your phone uh, you just have to turn your gps on uh, the app takes in the coordinates if you can get a photo great or if you can record uh, the call great otherwise you can just say that you saw this bird here and this helps scientists uh, you know identify areas for conservation and develop better policy so see if you can download these apps they really help uh, because what you're going to anyway be doing uh, as a fun sunday outing in say lalbagh or kaban park uh, is just one step more than that with regard to logging these species which will actually help uh, people working on these animals in and around bangalore another very underrated field is urban wildlife Uh, to be an ecologist today, you don't have to have permits to work in Ranthambore or Bandipur. Uh, people are slowly uh, awakening to the you know host of wildlife that we have in and uh, in and around Bangalore, even within the city. And you have the Great Backyard Bird Count, which is conducted by the Audubon Society, which explicitly uh, encourages people to only log the species that are found in campus. Again, Josephs is a part of the Great Backyard Bird Count. so citizen science is something that all of you should keep an eye about and all of you should contribute towards uh, because as budding zoologists and botanists uh, you are the interface between a common man and people actually working on these species right uh stuff that you should look out between your semesters so this is something that your professors will tell you uh, being in bangalore uh, we have some very eminent research institutes in bangalore and you have two of these very very prestigious research programs one is called uh, the ias uh, summer research fellowship program that is the ias srfp uh, it is very competitive but i encourage everyone to apply because if you get in uh, one you get paid to work at very very uh, important research institutes uh, and uh, they give you accommodation they give you food and you get to pitch your own project or you get to work on existing projects this is open to chemists as well uh, people can uh, get internships at bark baba uh, uh, baba atomic research center in bombay as well as all the iits all the icers all csr institutes as well as iisc and ncbs uh, so this is a summer fellowship program that typically lasts for 8 weeks which will be the entire duration of your summer and uh, you should you should definitely apply for this the other one is more long term and i'm glad that there's a whole bunch of first year students here uh, this is called the pobe which is the project oriented biology education program at jncsr in jakur so uh, essentially if you get through for this program there's a monthly stipend and it will be over 3 summers so it's typically 6 to 8 weeks per summer and this is more with regard to training in cutting edge uh, biological research the same institute conducts pose p o c e which is a uh, chemical and if all of you if any of you are interested in chemistry it follows a similar platform 
So uh, six to eight weeks over three summers with a paid stipend, cutting edge research in chemistry. So uh, these are two programs that I encourage you to apply for. Of course, not everyone's going to get these uh, simply because the, there are limited seats and applicants in India with our overpopulation is a big problem. But that doesn't mean there's no opportunities for you. Uh, like I said, Bangalore hosts a bunch of research institutes uh, right from CES where I work. NCBS has a great ecology program as well. Uh, and GKVK, uh, which is now waking up to, uh, you know, more ecology related research. They were heavily focused on genetics before. Uh, the and JNCSR. So these are four very, very prestigious, prominent uh, research institutes with ecology programs. And then you have a bunch of NGOs. So you have NCF, uh, which is in Sakar Nagar, WCS also Sakar Nagar, CWS, which work, which is based out of Mysore, but uh, works in Bangalore as well. So small carnivores, as their logo suggests, is their forte. And Dakshin Foundation, which is uh, surprisingly uh, a marine focused NGO based out of Bangalore. So uh, again, these are uh, these internships might not pay you, uh, but uh, if uh, uh, they they all uh, you know are very reputed, uh, the scientists and researchers working there are doing some very very cool research. So no harm in reaching out to them and seeing if you can intern with them uh, for a summer. Uh, make the most of what you have. So something that all of us realized only when we graduated from Joseph's and we were giving uh, competitive exams for our masters to either get into universities or, you know, give these uh, large scale national exams is that uh, universities in Karnataka that offer you a triple major, right? Uh, so you guys will be either MCZ or CBZ, CEZ, etc. Uh, simply because you're studying each subject with equal importance, you are miles ahead of people who are doing a, a single subject, uh, uh, a bachelor's degree with honors. So uh, this is an advantage when it comes to not only competitive exams, but also your overall knowledge base. Simply because when you graduate, you're having, uh, you know, incredible knowledge about three fields or three subjects. Whereas someone uh, from a college from another state is only going to have a, a bachelor's in zoology with honors. So that makes studying for competitive exams much easier because remember that uh, whenever you write these exams, you, you will be writing a broad umbrella uh, subject called natural sciences, right? Or life sciences, which tests you on microbiology, which tests you on chemistry and tests you on zoology or botany anyway. So when you have the background of a triple major, uh, you have, uh, you're, you're a cut above the rest. And the second thing I want to tell you about uh, the program at Joseph's is the term paper, which uh, the professors already touched upon. Now, the institute requires you to only publish a 1500 word essay, but that doesn't stop you from, you know, uh, properly uh, taking this up seriously and conceptualizing it right from your second year so that you publish something that uh, might actually be a research paper. And if you get out of your bachelor's with a you know, peer reviewed publication, which is not impossible, trust me, uh, a bunch of my batchmates did it. Uh, one of my friends uh, uh, who was uh, 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 my batchmate in microbiology uh, took like a hundred smartphones from his friends and swapped the bacteria from there and plated them to look at the harmful bacteria that are on our phones, which we are touching all the time. Uh, similarly, I uh, went ahead and published a book on birds of college. So uh, if you take your term paper seriously, uh, it's a stepping stone towards independent research, right? And if you're fortunate enough to go abroad for your master's, having a peer reviewed paper in your CV is going to, uh, you know, uh, shoot your chances uh, for admission uh, to the moon. So uh, both of these things in Joseph's are great and which is why you should feel privileged uh, to be where you are. Uh, the triple major, as well as the fact that it's exposing you to independent research in the bachelor's uh, stage itself, right? And then just some general pointers. It would be great if you applied for everything, uh, you know, because uh, sometimes you think that something might not interest you, uh, but unfortunately or fortunately, uh, you don't uh, get what you're interested in. And so apply for everything and then you'll find that it's harder to say no once you've gotten in. Take your time to figure out what interests you. At this stage, like, you know, it doesn't matter whether in your first year or your second year, it's equally important to understand what you're not interested in. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I, I'm a marine biologist now, which came out of nowhere. Like till my uh, third year in Joseph's, I had no idea I was going to be a marine biologist. I spent time making beer uh, 
uh, at beer club because i was a microbiology student and you need yeast to make beer so i tried everything and honestly uh, you'll stumble upon something that interests you so apply everywhere uh, you know even if it's like the most ludicrous internship uh, if you feel that you know something fun can come out of it or you can learn something just go ahead and apply for it uh, rejection and failure are absolutely okay like uh, trust me in a place like india or even abroad uh, because the competition is so high and there are so many people uh, is more often than not that you uh, that you get a rejection letter than an acceptance uh, learn from it simply because even writing an application is something that can help you later when you apply for grants for money for example and treat everything as a learning experience so regardless of how pleasant or unpleasant your internships are being uh, just you know don't get bogged down or uh, you know uh, think that it's the end of the road for you uh, just learn from it pick yourself up and apply again and uh, with that uh, i'd like to wish you all the best uh, if you need any of these resources or you ever feel like you know you need some help from someone who's been uh, through whatever you're going through please feel uh, free to reach out to me my email address is here or you can hit me up on instagram if you find that that's more informal uh, i post about jobs uh, in ecology and conservation all the time on instagram uh, so you can hit me up there as well and i'd be happy to take questions Thank you, Bharat, for spending time to share your thoughts. Over to Darshana. Sir, am I audible? Yes, go ahead. I don't see any questions in the chat box. Um, anyone have any questions? You all can raise Students your hands and then unmute yourself. Exactly. Kindly raise no, your hand and unmute. You can type and it and in the chat box or you could just unmute and ask. You guys should know that there are no stupid questions in science and some of uh, Nobel Prize winning discoveries have come from seemingly stupid questions that were asked. So please go ahead and ask me anything that you have in mind. You're 21 BBZ 43. I had a question. 21 BBZ 02. What is your like? What is your like as marine biologist? What is my life as a marine biologist? Is that the question? I think it's a typo. Or what do I like about being a marine biologist? 21 BBZ02, um, could you type your question again? Yeah, it is live. Oh, yeah. Um, see, uh, the glorious stuff and the stuff that everyone wants to uh, be a marine biologist for is obviously scuba diving and spending time underwater. Unfortunately, um, as a researcher, that's only 30% of your job, right? Uh, the remaining 70% is coming back and analyzing your data, uh, writing papers, communicating your research and all of that. Again, uh, we live for the field. But um, at, at the research program in IAC, I'm fortunate to be under a guide who has a field station in the Andamans, and that's where I do my work. Uh, my work is on uh, both fish and corals uh, in the Andaman Sea. Uh, so basically, when I'm there, I'm diving every day, which is about six months a year. And uh, when it's raining in the islands or there's a, a ban on diving and fishing, I'm back here in the lab at IAC, and I am uh, trying to make sense of um, all of the vibrant stuff that I see underwater. Yeah, somebody has raised your hand. You can go ahead. That's 21 BBZ 43. Could you unmute? Um, yes. Uh, yes, sir. I had a question that 
you told that you had uh, published a book on the birds of the college. So uh, if I'm interested in publishing a book about the biodiversity in my area, so what steps should I take for that? Yeah, uh, that's a good question, actually. And uh, so the first thing you've got to do is identify. So biodiversity is a very broad term, right? Like, uh, so if you are, uh, you know, knowledgeable about taxonomy of stuff like invertebrates and you want to encompass like all taxa, uh, that would be a project that would take a significant amount of time and investment. So if that's something that you want to do, uh, you should reach out to something like, say, the Nat Geo Explorer grant, which will actually fund your work, right? And this can be from anything to buying equipment uh, to, you know, uh, publishing fees uh, because you need to print books, right? Uh, or even something like posters. So uh, to start off, I would say uh, figure out taxa that you're comfortable with that you can identify. So if you want to say do mammals or just reptiles or birds, everyone starts with birds simply because bird watching is something that's accessible and easy. Um, so that's something that you can definitely do. Uh, see how much of time and effort it will take. See if you need uh, financial support. See if you need, uh, you know, inputs from experts in the field who will help you identify once you start sending them photos. But for starters, all you have to do is literally take a book, a paper, I mean, sorry, a book, a pen and uh, a camera if you have it uh, and just go out and start documenting stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of Facebook groups where you can post for ID. There's insects of India, moths of India, where, you know, it's free. You just put up the picture, uh, put the date, put down the location and ask for the ID. And someone who is an expert and will be on the group uh, will write back to you with or comment on the post with the ID. Uh, so uh, that it's something that you can definitely do. Uh, something that I would recommend, and this is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time, is to build on Father Cecil Saldana's work on uh, the biodiversity of plants and trees in Joseph's, especially because there has been so much construction in the college uh, since when, uh, I mean, since Father Saldana actually uh, published his book, uh, that it would be great uh, to look at like, you know, the loss of biodiversity uh, with, with regard to uh, our plant life. And I'm not great at IDing plants, which is why uh, we haven't gotten down to this, but that could be a great paper for someone who's interested a great term paper for someone who's who's a botany student, for example, uh, you know. So yeah, but biodiversity mapping biodiversity is something that is extremely underrated and is something that is growing in importance uh, all over uh, urban as well as uh, you know uh, protected areas. There's a question in the chat box. Do you have any information on cosmetic chemistry? Uh, cosmetic chemistry with regard to synthetic chemistry. Twenty one CBZ thirty four. So, is it available only with zoology, or even can we do research in plants in NSA? Oh no! Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, like like uh, Professor Shukumar said, it was uh, it, like the NSA started by both departments, but it's mainly zoology now. But I'm pretty sure no one in the department is going to stop you from working plants, and they're so supportive that they're going to definitely encourage your research. You can find someone in the botany department to collaborate with. You can find someone in the environmental science department to collaborate with. And both these books are available in the library in college, the book on birds as well as the book on plants. And there are copies of my book uh, even in uh, the even with the zoology department as well as the English department. How does this association help people with whom we work or live? OK. Uh, so the, of course, I mean, uh, simply because of the, the broad spectrum of the events that the NSA is conducting, uh, they're going to give you exposure, right? Plus, a lot of your professors are uh, where they are today because they are experts in their field. So they are great guides uh, when it comes uh, to picking a mentor for your uh, term paper. Uh, my guide, Dr. George Alexander, was someone I, I picked him simply because, one, he is a Bangalorean, so he was very familiar with bird groups in Bangalore. He put me in touch with BNG Birders, which is a bird watching group that meets every Sunday uh, since 1974. So I got to interview all of these people, ask them about bird life in Bangalore. So please do not underestimate the knowledge of your faculty. It goes way beyond the textbooks and the curriculum. And all you have to do is uh, take them out for tea someday and sit and talk to them. And you'd be fascinated by the inputs they can give you with regard to your research. 
how do I figure out which field in zoology I should be in? Uh, this comes if, uh, with reading. It also comes with what you find is fun. Um, so uh, even though I started with birds, uh, the first time I went diving underwater, which was again through an internship at NCBS who funded my uh, diving course, I uh, it completely blew my mind. And it really helped me uh, that, you know, life underwater is so less uh, studied when compared to life on land, uh, which is why I figured that, you know, marine biology was what I would do. Uh, and it's extremely fascinating. Uh, it's, uh, sorry. Uh, so your, uh, you know, zoology is a very broad field. Uh, it ranges, it's, it's, it's also very interdisciplinary right now. So just go follow your heart, man. I mean, you know, whatever interests you, whatever uh, gives you a kick, uh, whatever is fun, uh, see if you can make a career out of it. If you can't keep that idea at the back of your head and, you know, life can surprise you and you can come back to doing it. What is the selection process for getting into these summer fellowship programs in biology? So uh, both the JNCSR as well as the IAS, uh, they typically require you to uh, upload your uh, 10th and 12th standard marks cards. You have to write a, a 250 word proposal and you need to get a, a two recommendation letters. That's it uh, from uh, your faculty. They can be either your school teachers or your present college teachers. And uh, uh, that's about it. It's a free online application. And if you get selected, they will pay for your train ticket uh, to travel from your home uh, to the institute as well as your stay over there. And they give you a fellowship. So I will be sending the PPT with these links. You can read about them on your own time. As a marine biologist, how relevant is biostats? Biostats is relevant in any research today. Simply because if you have to publish or communicate your research, you have these things called conference intervals, uh, which essentially support like the uh, uh, or point towards like the significance of your data. So biostats, unfortunately, is something that you cannot escape from uh, in most fields today, uh, unless you're working on psychology. Uh, and I would strongly recommend uh, you, uh, all of you actually, that if you have an online course, either on Coursera or on Skillshare, if there's a basic course on biostats, please take it. It's extremely relevant because uh, math is unfortunately, like I became a biologist because I hated math, but math is unfortunately creeping back into my life. 21CZBT05, uh, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, uh, good morning. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Mr. Two questions, if yeah. I have the time. Um, firstly, the presentation was great, and thank you for the presentation. Thank you. My first question is that I'm a photographer, a wildlife photographer. Fantastic. And uh, I just wanted to know as to how it is out there to be a phot photographer and a zoologist, a researcher, and how do I get a more, um, you said about writing, a lot of writing and um, articles. Is there anything that you could say about a photographer having a chance out there? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, you can start off with your own blog, uh, which is, of course, like you don't have to pay for it and no one pays you. And uh, you can take this uh, course that's offered by the English department at Joseph's. It's called Writing in the Sciences, uh, which really helps you write uh, from a scientific perspective. But more than that, man, just take an interesting photo of something and write about the behavior that you see on Instagram and look at the feedback from there. You know, uh, again, if you want to actually generate money from your writing or your photos, uh, you can hit up any of these magazines, Sanctuary Asia, Current Conservation, Research Matters, and they will actually pay you uh, for your original work. Uh, but being a photographer is a great thing in our field because uh, the like, First principle of biology is essentially observation and documentation, and you're doing both uh, with your photos. So uh, just look at what you can apply for. And again, uh, do not be disappointed if you if you hear rejections. Uh, again, photography is very competitive. Wildlife photography is very competitive. But if you're an established wildlife photographer in India, you can make like bucket loads of money. And the best part is they pay for you to go into the jungle and stay at these fancy places and click photos. So if you can do that and make that your bread and butter, good luck to you, man. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I had another quick question on this. Somebody else. Uh, it is that 
with the new NEP system, we are being given a lot of choices as to pursue um, courses from uh, various subjects. Okay. Um, with, in light of this, what would you say are some of the other subjects that would help a researcher um, in the future, either working as a conservation um, researcher or an academic researcher? Oh, great. As you said, uh, one is writing. Yeah. Um, what? Other. Yeah, so if you're looking at conservation, uh, a very important part of conservation is outreach, right? So if you could take courses uh, from like the social sciences department in Joseph's because they do a lot of outreach, that will teach you the basics of interacting with people, making presentations, uh, because keep in mind that when you're doing conservation outreach, you're reaching out to people who more often than not have a very negative uh, you know, opinion of the species that you're trying to protect because they're dealing with conflict, right? And these themes really overlap with what the social sciences department is dealing with, but with humans. Another uh, course that I would recommend is statistics. Uh, Joseph has a fantastic uh, stats department. Uh, the basics of statistics, which can then be applied into biostats, uh, which are pretty much first principles of uh, biostatistics. So stats is something that I would recommend. And as always, I would always recommend doing English department courses simply because they're so much fun and they apply to, you know, any field uh, that you intend on uh, pursuing. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. There's a question in the chat box. Uh, how do you feel like once you are done with your bachelor's, since you go into a vast pool of people who are interested in similar things and everything is competitive? Yeah, uh, that's a fantastic question, actually, which is why uh, and it was a, it was something I had no idea about in 2015, which is why I made this presentation. Um, again, hopefully by your third year, uh, you have some idea about what you want to do your master's in. If you don't want to do a master's and you want to start working, that's completely OK. Uh, but. It is very competitive in India. That's not to say it's not competitive outside, but the number of people outside are a lot less. So I am hoping that once you've narrowed down to a particular field, uh, that will help you a lot. Uh, but otherwise, what you can do is, you know, still, if you just have a broad idea and no specialization, uh, like I did my master's in marine biology, but a lot of my friends uh, did master's in very broad fields. So give these national level exams that allow you to pursue a master's in uh, great institutes. Because bear in mind that you're already graduating from Joseph's, right? And then moving to like a state university would be a step down. So other private colleges, uh, national research and uh, research institutes like and so you can apply. Also, one thing I want to tell you is right after your bachelor's, you can apply for an integrated PhD program, right? Uh, and what that does is it uh, saves you a year in the long run. So your int PhD is going to be six years. And if you do a master's and then you do a PhD, it's typically going to be two plus five. So you save a year uh, if you go into an int PhD program. But again, I would only advise this uh, to super focused people. It's something that I would never be able to do. I didn't do it. And also, if you're OK being stuck in one place for seven years, uh, six to seven years. So uh, don't be overwhelmed when you're done with your bachelor's. Remember that you're graduating with a triple major and that you already have some experience in independent research because of your term paper, right? So don't get bogged down. Don't like don't let the imposter syndrome set in. Don't think you're not good enough. Uh, use these three years to have as much fun as you can, keeping your academics uh, at a particular pedestal. Otherwise, Shiv Kumar sir will kick me out of the chat. And also, like he said, take part in co-curricular. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, the NSA. There are a bunch of other associations in Joseph's. They teach you management, time management, people management. These are all skills that will really help you. And uh, if you're still feeling bogged down three years down, uh, hit me up. And hopefully, I'll be able to cheer you up, man. So, so where did you complete your master's in marine biology? I complete my master's in Pondicherry Central University. Uh, they have a department for ocean studies and marine biology in the Andamans. So again, that was through a national entrance exam. It's a uh, it's a very limited course because the Andamans is a very difficult place to live in. So when I wrote the exam, they were taking only 26 people, but now they take 60. 
So PU, uh, you can look it up, Pondicherry University. They also have a fantastic program on ecology and evolutionary biology or ecology and environmental science. So that's where I did my master's, but there's a bunch of places. There's Cochin University of uh, Fisheries and Ocean Studies, uh, Kerala. You have marine biology colleges in uh, Pune, uh, West Bengal. Uh, yeah, in India, that's where those are the good ones. I'm really interested in marine biology and marine animals. I would like to establish a starting point for myself to get a, sorry, uh, get, uh, okay. Marine mammal research in India is notoriously slow and uh, backward, simply because marine mammals are all protected in India, right? So what you can do is someone who's my junior at IIC has just launched a website called Where's My Cetacean? which is a global database for cetaceans. You can start there. But honestly, uh, working on cetaceans in India is very difficult. However, there's another marine mammal in India called the dugong. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar. It's also called the sea cow. Research on the dugong is kicked off like crazy in the last four or five years, thanks to WII, which has a compass sponsored project. So that's a great place to start. See if you can get an internship at WII uh, and you'll be working on dugongs. Uh, they work in the Andamans, they work in Tamil Nadu as well as in Gujarat. So they have three stations. Uh, hold on, I need to screw up. There's suddenly a lot of questions coming. So are we good on time? If you are okay with it, if not, we will take uh, two more and then wind up. No, no, I am fine. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, there's so many questions. You have literally strike the cord. Uh, a small additive addition to what you have been speaking. Yes, My sir. The concerns is about the three majors. Now, the education, national education policy is framed. Uh, students will have to opt for two majors. Oh no! Think, uh, yeah, uh, with uh, uh, yeah uh, the career advancement added. To that. Oh god! Zoology, you know, uh, offers all this better talents. I hope many of them are choosing zoology and they can also have another major uh, another core subject and pick up open elective the consensus is still getting built up okay the is yet to happen but okay. uh, we are there to uh, help them and provide all that information that is required from so so now sir it will be like a double major with one ancillary subject is it uh, yeah something like that it's still evolving the clarity oh. will come by. okay Okay, but uh, everything remains same, and uh, you are giving them wonderful inputs. So, so much avenues that uh, students can explore. So that's what uh, they should be looking for and working in that direction. You can continue, uh, but maybe another three minutes, three more questions we can take up and then wind. Great, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, C is a thirty-three double zero seven. Did you have worries of financial constraints and pay in ecology-related careers? How do you? Okay. That's a fantastic question. Uh, the good thing is once you hit the level of a PhD, because PhD programs are funded by ministries of either you know human resource development or environment, you end up earning as any other PhD scholar, whether he's working on atomic energy or chemistry. So again, the pay is not much. Like if you're an ecologist, like unless you're doing something shady, you're never going to be able to afford a Mercedes. Okay, but uh, I wouldn't say. Uh, the gap is so much now. Uh, a lot of NGOs are paying really well. The pay scale is standardized with regard to qualifications now. So if you're applying for an internship with a BSc qualification, uh, you will be earning uh, in at par with most other fields. Don't compare to IT and finance because uh, then uh, you know you won't be feeling good about yourself at all. It's a struggle to begin with, uh, but there is, there are national level scholarships now. So a very prestigious PhD fellowship is PMRF, Prime Minister's Research Fellowship, which actually pays 84,000 a month uh, for a PhD student now. Again, very competitive to get. But uh, to be very honest with you, most PhD fellowships in India, if uh, provided you're not in a state university, will pay anywhere between 31 to 35 a month, uh, plus HRA. So that is very, very comfortable to get by, uh, at least as long as you're single. Uh, after that, good luck getting a good postdoc because they also pay really well. What is the scope of microbiology under marine biology? What a fantastic question. This is something that I was contemplating given my background in micro. 
uh, 19 MCZ 35033, iOS 12 MCZ uh, 3307. So, marine microbiology is a great field, and uh, to be honest with you, um, the there is a research institute in Goa. It's called. Uh, hold on, let me get this right. Uh, National Center for Polar Ocean Studies (NCAOR) and NCPOR, and they fund only microbiologists to go to Antarctica uh, to study. So, if you're interested in studying penguins, too bad India doesn't fund you. But uh, you can uh, study. So, marine microbiology with regard to you know novel pharmaceuticals, with regard to virulent strains uh, that. given the pandemic uh, you know people are eating fish what if there's a new strain of bacteria that can cause a new pandemic from the ocean marine microbiology is a massive field bioluminescence is something that you can study like you can do your entire phd in just bioluminescence so that's a good good field i love that you're thinking along those lines and i hope that you know uh, you stick to that track and uh, pursue a career in marine microbiology all the national institutes of oceanography have microbiology labs So NIO is in Goa, it's in Kochi, it's in Mumbai, and in Vishakhapatnam. All of them have marine microbiology labs. So there is great scope. What national exam do you have to give, and how do you get into top universities? Uh, this is something that you should be considering post your masters. So you have this exam that's called GATE, General Aptitude Test, uh, which is conducted by the IITs. uh they have an exam called ecology and evolutionary biology so it's called gate ey that's how you get into iisc icers ncbs etc apart from that tifr has its own exam to get into tifr bombay as well as uh ncbs the tougher exam is uh the csir net which is uh in either life sciences or earth sciences and with this exam you can get into any csr institute as well as all the top institutes so all icers iits and uh, iisc uh, they all accept a uh, net so csr net uh, is another uh, national level exam that you can give these exams happen typically once or twice a year and uh, uh, based on the ranking system you will be shortlisted for the interview round and that's how you uh, that's how you get in uh, as an hold on as an association of nsa how do you deal with the conservation of zoology conservation of zoology zoology is not a dying field man i mean it's going to be relevant taxonomy is going to be relevant i don't know if you heard about the new species of uh, fly that was recently described um based on a very famous uh, drag queen so taxonomy is making a big comeback because people are uh you know changing the old rules of taxonomy and not naming creatures after mythical uh heroes and emo but naming them after pop culture uh beyonce has a fly named after her a bunch of uh, uh recently described species were described after characters on game of thrones and uh, lord of the rings so uh, it's hitting a chord with a lot of youngsters so i don't think zoology is going anywhere but if you meant conservation biology uh that is always going to be an up and battle in india the new government is very pro development and that should give you all the more reason to uh strive for a career in conservation uh, of both species as well as regions uh what exam did i write to clear uh, pu i already i think yeah. we'll jump that and parath will take the last question uh, oh. is evolutionary biology or evolutionary genetics to be more precise a good course with quite a scope of research in india something uh, that's yeah that's again uh, genetics is always going to be relevant simply because of the advent of environmental genetics now where you know you just collect samples uh, of soil for example and you screen them uh, because of the technology that we have now and you will get fecal samples of stuff like snow leopards to bacteria and it's a broad scale uh, you know tool to identify species so environmental genetics evolutionary genetics if you're interested in evolutionary genetics hit up dr pravin karant at iisc he runs the evolutionary phylogeography lab uh, it's a great field because it answers questions about cryptic species cryptic species are animals that look the same but are actually different species when you take their dna so uh, langurs for example 
uh, all of the langurs in the western ghats were called hanuman langur uh, because they looked the same so morphologically the taxonomy was identical but when researchers actually started collecting their poop and you know doing the dna analysis they found that they had different markers so they are actually different species and they cannot mate with each other so then you now have the nilgiri langur the purple faced langur that were all identified based on molecular studies so genetics is massive it has applications in both traditional ecology conservation biology as well as uh, hardcore biological research so if you can integrate genetics and you have courses in your third year in zoology where you do the basics of genetics so again a great field uh, you don't have to stick to classical zoology you don't have to stick to classical botany uh, you can uh, integrate you know genetics you can integrate environmental sociology into your research and uh, these fields are growing and funding for them is not going to stop any time in the future i believe that will be the last question i take uh, i yes, hope yeah. i hope i was of some help you can feel free to hit me up uh, either on email or instagram i'd like to take a minute uh, to thank uh, dr jay shankar uh, for this opportunity and uh, the nsa and the zoology department at josephs i am happy to come and give talks uh, on my field or my research or anything that the students will feel is helpful in whatever capacity i can and thank you all for your time and attention i hope you have a great night Thank you very much, Parul, for sparing your time, sharing your thoughts, inputs, and also guiding your juniors. Over to Sumant for the formal note of thanks. Uh, before that uh, resumes, a small announcement. There's a link shared in the chat box. Uh, NSA has devised a new mechanism hereafter. The this uh, there'll be a questionnaire sent through the Google form uh, relating to what the content of the talk for that day is. So there's only to have a check on uh, your inputs as well okay and uh, please enter your mail id as well to which the e certificates will be sent over to sumant uh, bharat there is a lot oh, of conversation in the chat box as well yeah yes sumant a uh, very good evening to everyone here on behalf of the natural science association department of zoology i would like to thank mr rahuja for giving us such an insightful talk for sharing with us so many useful resources and for taking time to answer so many of the questions posted by the participants i would like to extend a heart, heartfelt thanks to our principal father dr victor lobo sdj dr jay shankar coordinator of the natural science association and the faculty of the department of zoology for their constant support and guidance a big thank you to all the members of the core team of the natural science association and the volunteers for helping the smooth conduct of this webinar lastly I would like to thank all the participants for listening and actively taking part in this event. This was the first of the many webinars or events that will be organized by the NSA in this academic year, and I hope you will all be a part of them. Thank you once again, and have a wonderful evening ahead. Thank, thank you, sir. all the office bearers. Uh, Bharat, uh, just to mention, if uh, things are turning right with a bunch of students interested, we will. Uh, try reaching out to visit your lab or as a faculty as well we would uh, like to have some interaction with your lab so let's see how the pandemic uh, turns out to permit us in doing these things uh, thank you again for sparing uh, your time and sharing wonderful insights and links with your juniors thank you Bharat. thank you so much sir it was a privilege and uh, to all the josephites best of luck with everything and i hope you make the most of uh, your three years in college yes thank you uh, participants please fill in the google form that is sent uh, it's all about what the content of the talk was today answer those questions along with your email to which the certificates will be sent this will be the format henceforth for all the webinars and events that nsa will conduct Thank you all. I thank uh, Professor K. S. Uh, Shukumar, our present HOD. This is uh, Sir's uh, first uh, uh, program uh, after Sir has uh, taken in charge as the head of the Department of Zoology. Uh, we will be looking forward for Sir's uh, support and guidance. For sure, he is going to render us and guide us. 
and congratulations sir for the post for all the students uh, the first years and others to also know and also all the faculty members of the department of zoology for participating in this uh, webinar uh, thank you all participants uh, we had a major chunk from uh, our own college and also participants from uh, the other parts of the country as well uh, hope to see you in all the forthcoming webinars that we are going to organize many of you uh, have keen interest in joining the nsa team i believe the volunteers the office bearers will reach out to you please be part of it most of the notice gets to reach through the nsa teams any interaction of you willing to actively participate please do put in your message there in the group yeah also if there's further questions you can reach out to bharat the bharat has already agreed to answer those questions okay thank you all uh, present uh, yeah there are yes yeah that's from the chat yeah thank you all uh, we'll wait for some time for those who didn't get to reach the link and then close the session formally thank you bharat thank you the department our hod and all the participants and thanks to all the office bearers uh, for setting up this uh, webinar and all congratulations to the office bearers for this academic year who are going to lead us into organizing and successfully implementing various events that are planned for this academic year tuning good night bye bye Yeah, as you fill the form, you can leave. Thank you. Rebecca Ashwant, would you like to share anything? You can. Uh, students, you can fill in, and uh, after completion, uh, you can please leave the meeting. Thank you, Dr. Jayshankar. Is Bharat still there? Uh, I